Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the Babcock Davis RH-Kit Hinge Support-M. This is a replacement hinge support. In essence, it's an L-angle bracket. This has some fastener holes prepped in the short leg, some holes prepped in the long leg, and it will include some fasteners, which we'll go over in a moment. Uh, this device is used to attach to the underside of the lid, allowing you to attach your hinge pack, <clears throat> your, your spring pack, forgive me. It will bolt through these two holes here and here or here and here, depending on how you are installing it. Okay. Um, th and this is made of steel. This is a zinc plated for corrosion resistant product. Let's go over the dimensional properties of this item. Overall length of the medium hinge support, 12 and a quarter. It's long leg or it's vertical leg, about two and seven sixteenths. And then the width is about an inch and a quarter. Its material thickness is probably about a hundred thousandths. 0 0.09, 0 0.09, okay. Now, the these three holes attach to the underside of the lid. The length on the, the dimension of those holes from one end, I imagine they must be symmetrical. They are symmetrical. Okay, that first hole, about three quarter. The middle hole, about six and a quarter, down to 11 and three quarter, okay. Now, the holes on the back, the top hole at about five eighths over to the next hole at about four and five eighths are for the hinge uh, connection. This hole at seven and seven eighths, and then over to 11 and seven eighths, that would be for the opposite side. Now, there are four holes in here that I, there are four holes in here I don't know what they're for. This hole and this hole, this hole and this hole. I don't know what they're for, and should I come in contact with that information, I will advise. But those holes are located at about an inch and a quarter, over to two and a half, over to 10, and then 11 and a quarter. I said that there were fasteners for the top. You're gonna to get three riv nuts. They literally call them riv nuts. And then these um, pan head sheet metal screw, uh, pan head machine screws, quarter 20, I believe, with a Torx. That riv nut's gonna go, of course, up into the lid, and then as you get in there and you tighten that down, okay, you're gonna get your um, installation of that, of that top bracket that's gonna be there. I understand riv nuts generally collapse down over the thickness of the material. Um, you know what? I had that backwards. It has to be this way because those, yeah, most definitely, because that will then allow that to collapse down over, okay, is how that's going to go. And you'll get those three bolts for that. Now, there are some links below this video, and let's go over them now. There is a link called Cut Sheet. You know, actually, before we get to that, there is an image below this video that shows um, a couple of roof hatches. I'm going to say that those brackets shown there are the L size and not the M size. Yeah, they're definitely the L size. Um, both of those images, I believe, show the L, the dash L, which is longer. I think it's about 18 inch or so in length. That link to the cut sheet uh, is going to allow you to uh, review the three, the six brackets, there are three in zinc, there are three in stainless. There's dash S for short, dash M for medium, dash L for long. I know that the short in zinc is discontinued. Um, I don't know about the stainless version of them, um, but that information will be in some future video, I suppose. Um, the problem that we have is we don't know which one you're supposed to use in what instance, and that is really the reason that this video exists uh, in addition to just the marketing aspect, I suppose. But to tell you, okay, here's the length, here's the location of the screws, 
Does this match what you need? The problem with knowing the one that you need is the factory doesn't necessarily publish all of the answers to, oh, you have this rough hatch, well, here's the hardware that you need. And they do so, I think, intentionally. Um, because I would imagine that they get a lot of people that call them and say, hey, I need this lifting mechanism. What size spring do I need? The first thing the factory says is, which, which, which of our roof hatches do you have? Oh, I think it's a um, that routine. Um, and it would also be, you know, the factory gets those calls, help me figure out what I need. Well, which of our units do you have? Oh, I don't have one of your units. Okay, stop. Or... The other reason will be there's a, another company who wants to make roof hatches, but they want to just source out the parts. Well, the Babcock Davises of the world aren't, I don't believe, interested in helping their competition get a, get a foothold. Um, and then you do literally have people um, that are making their own stuff. And the reason the factory doesn't entertain those conversations is not because they're not nice. They are. They're all quite exceptional, very willing to help. The problem is roof hatches are tested, and in many instances they're fire rated, or they're windstorm rated, or they're load rated, or they're rated for the intrusion of water. The way it's built, with all of its subcomponents listed on a bill of materials, all go together. For the factory to sit there and say, yeah, you can certainly use that on your three-quarter inch plywood, <laughs> you know, roof hatch up into the upper area of your two-story garage, that would be very... Uh, not only inappropriate, but I think it would be quite unprofessional of them and not do their product line, nor you a, a service. Um, so they, they, they really don't engage or participate in those conversations. Now, if you call us and ask us those same questions, hey, I need this part. Okay, what are you using it on? I don't know. I, I say, well, you know, the factory doesn't um, enrich us with that information. So I really, I'm, I'm prevented from participating um, maybe the same as the factory is, but maybe for just a slightly different reason. I have all the same feelings that they do about putting products onto assemblies that aren't tested or engineered to go together. Um, that's where the video comes in with dimensions and visual representation. The sure way to get the right product is to tell us the Babcock Davis serial number on your roof hatch. We can then contact the factory and get from them a bill of materials for the item and then know exactly what you're working with. And that's the proper way to support the product line. Um, so those three brackets are listed there. I know one of them is discontinued. Moving on through the rest of the product, uh, the cut sheets, you've got a product catalog. It's just a product catalog is all it is for roof hatch material. Then you've got roof hatches installation instructions. And that's a fairly generic um, document in the sense of replacing a part. It's not for that. It's for the entire overview of installing a roof hatch. So it's there because it is certainly a, a related sort of concept to the overall uh, goal of what you're trying to accomplish. Now having said this, there is a link below this video to the manufacturer's page where you can pull up not only all of the Babcock Davis products that we sell, but also a link to the manufacturer's website as well as a link to the full product catalog. Um, that will show more than just rough hatches. They get into access panels, they get into floor doors, things of that nature. I do find working with their customer service to be a pleasant experience and they are prompt and uh, predictable and reliable in their responses. And they are ever eager to help. There is a technical support person that's there that I find to be uh, very uh, capable and uh, tolerates the multiple, several and many questions. If you have any questions on the R-H-K-I-T-H-I-N-G-E-S-U-P-P-O-R-T-M medium hinge place uh, hinge support or any other Babcock Davis product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you.